Okay, let's go. Uh, thank you very much, all, to be connected today. Um, it's a first for us, so I'm very pleased to be with uh, with Jérôme. This is just in front of me. We are in the same same room. Um, I will introduce uh, Jérôme and myself and a bit of apply, and then we will uh, go on on this uh, this webinar. I, I was saying it's the first because apply is working on the ocean trade for many years right now, but we have decided. Uh, to host this uh, kind of webinars, we are doing it uh, on a quarterly basis for road transportation with uh, last time was uh, 1,500 people connected. So it was really, really great. Uh, we decided to try to do it also in on, on the ocean market with all the, um, the things that we can uh, read and see uh, on the market right now. We are hoping to have some a dozen of people connected. Uh, you uh, are... 420 uh, people uh, that has registered. So it's great, very great news for, for, for us. Thank you very much. It was, it, it's a test for us if this is, if you think this is a great webinar and that you, I mean, we will continue to do it for sure. So let's start with it. Uh, you have a Q and A part uh, on, the, on the tool, on the Zoom uh, tool. Please ask questions uh, on it, on the flow during the presentation. I will, I have the, the the screen open on my side. I will take try to take some questions uh, on on the way, and at the end anyway, we will uh, answer to the to the questions or at least to the majority of the questions. So I am with Jerome. Jerome is uh, our uh, captain. So we call him Captain, captain Jerome in Apply. Uh, he has a very vast knowledge of uh, ocean shipping. Uh, more than thirty years uh, working in the industry. Uh, managing direc director of uh, NYK Line uh, in, in in France, uh, and today he is the one that is uh, that, that has all the knowledge uh, at apply on the ocean parts. Um, myself, I'm the I'm Thomas. I'm the CEO of the of the company of Apply, a company that we created about uh, six to seven years ago right now. So let me jump directly uh, to the to the topic. The next slides you will see it's a brief introduction of why we are here in the sense that why uh, what is apply and what we are doing it will last two to three minutes uh, this is not the topic of the webinar today the topic is really to see first uh, give some updates on uh, on the markets of course what is uh, or what is going on on the red sea is the top uh, topic let's say uh, so we will talk about it uh, we will uh, see directly the impact of freight rates uh, and then we will take one paper that uh, Jérôme has published some weeks ago uh, that was about the three scenarios of 2024. We will update these scenarios. We will see uh, what is going on right now and what might be uh, the probability for each of these scenarios, or not the probability, but at least to see what might be the future for the quarters to come uh, on 2024 for the, for the one that are discovering apply right now. We are not wizards that try to forecast the future. Uh, our role is by taking data, by taking information from the market to try to build this scenario and to give it on a scientific way to then for, it, for you then to take uh, the at hopefully the best decisions. And then we'll uh, um, finish with a, a Q&A session. So regarding uh, apply, I already talked a bit about it, but uh, we are um, a, a global company, um, and we are we have a DNA that is quite simple. A, a huge part of expertise in in freights, ocean freights, air freights, road transportation across the world, and the other parts, the second leg, let's say, it's technology. We have a strong people in data, in data science, in 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 tech uh, that are working together with the expert of transportation. It, it allows us to have many services, and the one that we will use today is the one that called Smart, that is collecting huge amount of data uh, directly from the market, uh, from shippers, from freight forwarders, transactional data, meaning from real invoices that we are gathering, uh, and the market insight part, where we use this data to give insights, to try to uh, give some information to you, for you to, to take to make decisions. So you have both. We are offering SaaS services to access directly the data and also a kind of consult consultancy in which you can 
have uh, Jerome that is talking to you for 30, one, 30 minutes, one hour, or two, two hours, and give you insights or other experts, experts that we have in the company. This is it for the introduction of, uh, of, uh, of Apply. Now uh, let's go directly on the, on the main topics. Thank you very much for your kind introduction, Thomas, and uh, welcome everyone to this webinar. Yes, it's a, a very nice rendezvous today. We have together uh, in a snowy Paris. So uh, for people who are far away from us, um, yeah, we have to say a little hello. <laughs> we are clearly under the snow in Paris uh, today <laughs> regarding the specification. Yes, uh, as Thomas said, we, we are going vastly to focus on the, on the Red Sea uh, situation and um, how uh, it is vastly evolving and uh, what are the impact and uh, what are the stands uh, to, uh, to adopt if uh, there is some solutions uh, to go through this uh, very, very tough navigation. That was not planned. That was not planned. And that's the reason why there is this chronology of, uh, of the events, of the past events, because most of the 2024 shippers budget were built in October. And in October, globally, uh, the feeling and uh, the analysis for 2024 from all, from all, without distinction, uh, in terms of forecasting, was well, the fundamentals are bullish for the shipping lines. Uh, there is this threat of overcapacity, which is ruining completely every expectations to try from the shipping line side to restore the market. So that is to say, to be honest, that with the K-driver between Asia and Europe, for example, for a 40 footer, just to follow and to, to stay mainstream, even if it is restrictive, I agree, as such, to talk only as a trendsetter of Asia Europe, but at the end of the day, it is a trendsetter, so we can't ignore it. And, uh, in October, back in October, it made sense to think that 2024 market average for a 40 footer between China and North continent uh, on a direct basis, on a port to port basis without transshipment to, uh, to budget something uh, around 1,500 US dollars between 1,000 and 1,500 made sense. And the issue, it is that all the master budget of a lot of shippers have been built with this K driver in mind. And today, uh, we will see it later, but uh, we are very far from this uh, price, average price. So uh, yes, you, you have it on, on the screen. Uh, the, the big focus is Babel Mandab. Uh, um, these are the right figures because very often you, you can say some discrepancies in the figures. And I think also in order to explain for you and for your internal customers in-house, in your own companies, it is interesting to, to, to stick to some strong figures and um, that you can discuss. Uh, and regarding as um, volumes crossing the Suez Canal, there were some lot of discrepancies in the press. So, Let's stick to the right figures. The right figures, it is, yes, it is the most accepted figures for the, regarding the global maritime trade is 12% through the Suez Canal. And already some people will say, well, 12% is not a game changer, 12%. You can find some big plans if it's, the situation is critical only for 12%. But as we are talking about container business, the truth regarding the container impact uh, is far more than 12% and is close to 30%. Uh, uh, so 30%, yes, it's a game changer uh, for an industry. And as we are talking about the container industry, it is clearly a game changer. 14 days, uh, we have also uh, to, 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 to uh, take into account some Good figures talking about the parameters because at the beginning of, at the beginning of the crisis we heard that well it will be one week more so no big issue one week more 
we can cope with that with the SAPE and so on. No, it's not one week more uh, to go to, through the Cape route. Uh, it is minimum 10 to 12 to 14 for the north and 14, I think, is uh, will be will be interesting to take in account as a figure because we have also to anticipate the fact that the transit in the port will be delayed also. So 14 days is a is a good uh, is a good figure I think to take in account at this stage. But this is forgetting to talk uh, to talk about the med. And uh, not only West Med and uh, East Med, but um, of course, East Med, East Med will be worse. But Med as a whole, as you have to re-enter through Gibraltar, uh, it's even longer. And for the Med, you can talk about 18 days, 18 days minimum uh, for for FOS, for example. Uh, so. Um, these are the first figures I want to discuss with you. Uh, if effectively uh, the situation is uh, is going to last a little bit, here we are. I think we can go yeah, to the next. Yeah, thank you, place. thank you, Jerome. Wait, the the next one is th this one is really to 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 have an idea of what what exactly what is happening, what happened in the past, and you see that the timeline over there that we took directly from Standard and Poor's was beginning of January. We we'll try to see right now what what is the impact directly. Uh, today uh, we are talking about twenty seven attacks of drone and missiles mm. against vessels. Mm. Um, up today or yesterday, let's say mm. um, this attack. First thing is that the last one was under a vessel, Brit um, a vessel from Brittany, um, and no major injuries in terms of people, in terms of goods was uh, mentioned and this is the majority of cases right um yes yeah, so far so good <laughs> between brackets of yeah. course but we have been lucky enough so far that there was no casualties the only casualties we heard about are the poor uh, two navy seals who were um, close to somalia trying to uh, block a vessel with apparently some uh, uh, weapons for the for the routes but uh, uh, I also take the opportunity to uh, to think about the, the crew of the Galaxy Leader, of course, who has been uh, forgotten too much, I think, uh, in latest discussions, because these 18 people, uh, captain and uh, second captain and, uh, and the rest of the crew, uh, captain and second captain are uh, also from the EU, hein? I would like to, to tell to the, to the people. Uh, and and uh, they have been hostages for two months now. And uh, of course, uh, I think that uh, we have to think about them and, and to do whatever is possible to to make their life easier. Um, that is to say, but and back to what uh, Thomas was saying, uh, 30 attacks and so far, no huge casualties, uh, no severe casualties, no big issues. Uh, and we hope uh, there will no have, uh, there will be no big issues. But it is important to notice that yes, uh, a vessel has not been broken. A vessel uh, didn't caught fire. Uh, so for time being, we are talking about very limited impact on uh, the merchant marine as such. It is positive. But uh, we have also to uh, put that in a perspective with the, um, the threat and with the evaluation of the risk that which is now behind uh, and the impact on rates. Just a comment on the rates. Uh, I don't know why exactly, but on the slides here, you can the, the, the title has been removed. This mm -hmm. is the price that you can see over there here yeah, or for a 40 GP container between Shanghai to Rotterdam. Okay, mm. so we are in the uh, Asia to Europe uh, main trade lane. Mm. Uh, and indeed, uh, we can see that the prices that were very low, let's say that 1,000 for 40 GP mm. uh, between Asia to Europe is a is a historic low, or at least over the past years. That was in October to November 2023. Is now today, if we're looking at uh, the FAK or, 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 the, or the, the prices for the weeks to come, uh, it's multiplied by six sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a huge increase, and especially in the last days. Uh, 
So yes, many questions on that, uh, Jerome, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so uh, oh, it's a huge change, and it's so fast that uh, for a lot of people it, it is going mad. Uh, one thousand dollar back in October was something which was not normal either, uh, because uh, we expect uh, break-even cost, average break-even cost for the shipping lines in the one thousand eight hundred pivot uh, area uh, between Asia and Europe. So that is to say that uh, the market accepted already for the past quarter of 2023 that the shipping lines on the east-west routes were working below below break-even level. And uh, it's a problem <laughs> in itself. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I, I take this opportunity also to say, in the last paper that you published, you were trying to give some let's say, guess or insight of what is the, the pivot price for mm -hmm. a normal market. Let's say yeah. that for the carriers to break even, but also to be able to invest in, in environmental transition, mm -hmm. investing in, in, in new fleets, uh, it depends on the corridor, of course, but if you want, please have a look uh, at this at this document. Uh, this is quite interesting to see what what are the theoricals, let's say, prices that fair. the fair prices <laughs> between exactly yeah, the world yeah. fair is quite good yeah. between shippers and carriers. But we are not living in a fair world. No. That's the issue. <laughs> and market is always right. That's the second issue. But in this kind of exercise, it is interesting to try to assess what could be the levels of a fair price, a fair average price. Uh, what is a fair price? A price, a fair price, it is a price where the um, shipping line will make money, will make normal money, uh, particularly taking in account that uh, all he has to make some very specific and very heavy investments regarding the green transition. And on the other hand, this price has to reflect uh, something that will not impact floor inflation. And it is very important that it is something we try to, 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 to build together, uh, this, this, this uh, idea of fairness in the pricing. And, uh, and for the benefit of all the parties, that is to say, huh? for the benefit of all the parties in order to navigate through these very, very choppy waters. And uh, so with the break-even at 1,800, we can estimate that under normal conditions, through going through the, the Suez Canal, uh, to pay for a customer 2,500 US dollars, to me, it makes sense. It makes sense. It is something which is close to a fair price for every party to feel comfortable with uh, including the retail market. And uh, we will see it later on on the next slide, but we have, if we take in account the Cape route, there is an additional, roughly an additional cost of 1,000 US dollar per TU. Uh, I was interested because it is a raw calculation, this 1,000 dollar TU, this was a raw calculation we took into consideration. Uh, building our prices uh, and working in-house uh, within Apply. And a few days ago, this, this kind of price, additional price, was confirmed by a, by a, a good competitor of us. And, and so that was showing that we, we were working uh, basically in the same areas. And yes, a fair price of 3,500 through the Cape route, to me, would make sense. Over this price, we take a risk to reinitiate inflation at the floor. And this is for sure a big, big, big yeah. issue. And something we, everyone would like to avoid, try to avoid. We have many questions on that, uh, Jerome, and many questions that I have in mind also talking about that. But so today, the fair price, let's say a fair price, including the cost of going uh, to the, the south of Africa will be uh, 3,000, 3,500. The question is, the question that I have in the in the chat right now is for for contracts that have been made in October or November. Mm -hmm. uh, what is, I mean, many people are, many freight forwarders are asking for emergency surcharge. Yeah. 
what is a normal energy surcharge? I, I guess we don't have the, 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 the answer. What we see from the data is uh, emerg emer emergency surcharge for 1,000, 2,000 in certain cases. Even more. Even more. So for sure, if you have uh, 2,000 freight costs and you add 2,000 on it and even more, mm. prices can be quite, uh, quite crazy. And indeed, if we are keeping just on the, the previous slide, the, the, we are not in the same situation than during the COVID, for instance. Uh, this situation, and this is the, the, the big questions, how long is, is it last? Will, will it last? Uh, and is it the same case? And I, I, I'm trying to start with an answer, but today we don't have shippers that are asking for, they, they don't have a shortage of uh, goods in their warehouse less. Uh, mm. or less. Mm. Maybe some, uh, and mm. we see over there, uh, maybe in automotive or in beauty and mm. health is starting to be the case. Mm. Uh, but we don't have a, a, a panic of, I need to have some goods right now. So if the demand is not crazy, uh, I mean, can we see some uh, capacity shortage right now? Uh, how it will impact everything? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you, you are right to say, uh, because I can hear it also uh, uh, in some places. Well, it's back to the COVID era again. Uh, it is a, a part two, a V2 of the COVID attack. I don't think so, uh, because uh, things are very different uh, in terms of fundamentals. At the time of the COVID, we had no ideas where we were going at all, at the global level, at the worldwide level. Here, we are talking about a local crisis, which is a very severe threat, but it is a local crisis, identified crisis, and even if we don't know exactly how to solve it, things if there is at worldwide <laughs> level a real willingness to cope, to stop this situation and to make uh, the Babel Mandab safe again, uh, it is something which is, in my opinion, far more manageable than the COVID issue at the time of the post lockdown when everybody was doing a nonsense. Uh, wanting cargo at uh, every price uh, with no reason at all. So this time, inventory situation is not the situation it was uh, when the COVID uh, in the post lockdown town, uh, let's say April 20. It's not the same situation. And there is some B plans. There is some B plans uh, to activate uh, with the rail. There is some B plans to activate with C and rail, uh, C and air. Uh, okay. So these options are costly, but there is some options and in a more friend market, that is to say. And we have also uh, to keep in mind something which are the market fundamentals for 2024 and 2025. And the market fundamentals for 2024 and 2025, aside the UTI crisis, it is that the industry will reach 30 millions of TUs of capacity. It is a huge jump. It is a jump of nearly 10%. So um, at the end of the day, when this crisis will over, the capacity will remain. If we are in a scenario through the capes, this big capacity coming between brackets will be a perfect fit. <laughs> at the time, it will be launched uh, in order to, to cover the needs, particularly if the global demand remains flat or with very low growth. Uh, but of course, it is something uh, that will happen when the UTI crisis will be over, when the Babel Mandel crisis will be over, then the huge capacity will uh, come again and uh, will impact severely the price. So to answer to your question, uh, for the shippers who can delay and postpone, yes. For the very urgent cargo, activate B plans through the RC or through the rail to reactivate the, the rail westbound between China and Europe. Uh, I think there is some, uh, some fair uh, solutions to find within the crisis. And, um, and then, yes, we, we have to, to be prepared, to be prepared uh, that 
at least I think for uh, the month of January, uh, there is some massive um, use of the of the root of uh, the Cape of uh, of Good Hope. Um, Jerome, uh, we have a lot of questions. I mean, lot of questions. I'm not able to to read all of them. Sorry, uh, but in then going through the the the, um, the, the these these routes. Uh, we estimate the increase of 1,000 costs. Uh, this includes also, and to answer one question, the, the saving of going through the canal. Uh, the cost of going yes. through the canal, yes. indeed, yes. will not be in the in, in yes. the total cost, but going through uh, Cape of Good Hope, uh, we estimate the cost of 1,000, including the saving, let's say, exactly. of going through the, the, exactly. the canal. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes, yes, it is important to notice that. And of course, also, you can imagine that for uh, an economy like uh, the Egyptian economy, it, it can be bearable for on the long run to to lose such a uh, half a million dollar a day uh, of money. So, uh, yeah, and you're, you're right. We are here talking about ocean freight in terms of uh, containers, but mm. it's starting to be the same for oil. And, and I mean, this is also a big, uh, will be a big issue globally. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I ju try just to Let's say I have a summary because you already talked about the market fundamentals and we have many things here uh, that are on, the, uh, on play. We, we will use this slide to try to talk about all these uh, different scenarios and maybe some scenarios will yeah. be mixed up. And um, we have a, a full document on that. So uh, please uh, read it or ask us to have access to it and, and we will manage that. Uh, but the main idea is that today we have strong increase in prices because of uh, emergency, emergency surcharge, because of additional cost of going through the south of Africa. In the other way, we have market fundamentals where we know that more containers or more vessels are coming in. Will uh, 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 in plus 10% you were talking about, it's yeah. huge. Uh, so, and I will put another one that is the fact that carriers were in kind of islands is no longer the case, but we can see, and uh, and I will talk about the, the last news that we had from the past days. Mm. I mean, I, I'll let you go through yeah, these yeah, yeah. scenarios. Very quickly, yes, that was a... That was our homework. Huh? It is a, it is a kind of a yearly climax. Uh, this uh, three scenario for industry uh, at apply, and uh, well, not. Uh, not a big deal uh, as such, and uh, but the first the first one, the first scenario, it is a scenario basically we are living today. Uh, I, I will not come back uh, a lot on this one because uh, we know it, it is not uh, supposed to last for a very long time for Suez. For Panama, it is another issue because it is a. It depends a lot of about the level of the water, and of course, um, it fits well to have uh, the longest route uh, scenario uh, with the two uh, with the two capes. That's the reason why I, I pushed it a little bit, and because it is uh, in terms with the capacity coming, it may be a theoretical uh, perfect fit for the shipping lines, even if it doesn't make sense on the long run. But we we can still we can still think about it the second one uh, to be to me on a long term basis is uh, the one who will gain traction in the future and particularly since we learn the cooperation within the gemini 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 project uh, between Maersk and, uh, and apac lloyd uh, yesterday um, very intensive uh, very interesting announcement related to career discipline. That is to say, when I'm talking about career discipline, that is having a making sense behavior on the market, uh, on a structural basis. And uh, weaknesses of uh, Maersk after the divorce within the M2 uh, uh, was showing that uh, Maersk was in a difficult position and now was not an, in an easy position due to a very low uh, order book level compared to the other big buy, big guys uh, on the screens. And, uh, and also uh, <laughs> a commitment uh, to, uh, to offer between brackets some uh, vessels to, uh, to the US. 
and uh, we see it now with the crisis with MERSC Limited uh, uh, using quite a lot of uh, so, some significant fleet. Uh, and the longer route uh, just uh, ends for Maersk in an issue where they have not enough vessel to cope with the demand. And so uh, they had to uh, charter some vessel from uh, fellows from ONE and uh, other companies, the one companies. But um, on the long run, that's not enough. And so uh, even if it is to me a defensive approach, uh, this cooperation within Gemini uh, is something which is a real game changer and showing also uh, the top player and the big winner of 2023 who was, in my opinion, MSC, to show uh, that there is a reaction also mm. and not to let MSC go alone uh, to uh, to run uh, in front of all the others. Uh, so, and carrier discipline means also, by this way, to adapt better, to monitor more closely the demand, to adapt to have a, really a better adaptation of the offer. And with the idea of offering a better service, because at the end of the day, all the shipping lines know that, uh, of course, there is price, but uh, they need uh, visibility on, uh, on the service uh, that will be offered. And uh, there is an idea behind that, which is interesting. It is to say, OK, if in the first scenario you say uh, it's quite a good fit from the shipping line side, if we take in account uh, a bigger capacity, OK, why not? Maybe we, it will be an opportunity to go through the Cape to uh, reinstall uh, some weekly services. And even if the transit time will be far longer, to have to get more regularity. And at the end of the day, it is something that the shippers are requesting, even more than the delay in itself. It is the truth of the prediction, which is important to the systems. It is the truth of the prediction, which is important for the SAP, for all the systems driving the shippers' logistics. So it can make sense to have an approach based on on far longer transit time if they are respected. What the shippers doesn't like and what doesn't work and what creates huge overcost, it is unpredictable. It is, uh, yes, it's late. Why? I can't explain why. That's not acceptable. But if you can go back to more fidelity in what you are announcing in terms of regularity, uh, it can be it can be something where you can find a win-win behind the scene with the idea of the fair price I explained before. Very quickly now the third uh, the third topic and uh, the third topic the third scenario. The third scenario it is a scenario uh, it, it is a, it is a scenario that is related on um, with what Anthony Blinken said recently in, in Davos. Uh, of course, we, we don't get over focus on the UT situation and, and on the Babel Mandab. The situation in the Chinese Sea is also um, complex and can be a very hot topic in two areas, particularly the Taiwan Straits first, uh, which is something we have to take into consideration because if there is something happening in the Taiwan Straits, uh, it can divert cargo, but all, it can also stop the business and uh, we have to take that into to consideration we have to take this option into consideration what happens if we stop the business uh, and there is also the activity uh, nearby the philippines uh, which is a, a real a real concern so uh, yes if you will look at the fundamentals of the economy over capacity will dominate 2024, clear. But the weight of um, the geopolitical factors are so heavy that the probability uh, that they impact the macro dynamics of 2024 is so obvious that it has to be taken in account, in my opinion. Yeah, and it, it's answering some many questions that we have. 
uh, regarding uh, will the price stop rising? What is the forecast for the quarters, the months is to come? Mm. And, and for sure, we are not, we cannot forecast everything. Mm. If it will be the case, we were not doing this, maybe this job and we'll do something else. But the, the main the main takeaway, if I can uh, put it like that, is that from your opinion, from our opinion, uh, prices at are at a high level and above what might be the fair price right now. Mm. So we don't expect prices to continue rising and not we, we won't expect prices to reach the post COVID uh, prices, but due to all the geopolitical situation, we expect uh, uh, volatility during the year. And uh, hopefully we the best scenario will be to not have some politi geopolitical shocks and to just deal with the UT, uh, UT situation and go back to normal. Uh, but what you were just saying is that the probability of having new shocks and the probability then of having a volatility of prices is quite, is quite high uh, at, at that point. This is what we were uh, writing also in November and December. Uh, and we keep uh, on, this, uh, on this point of view. Mm. And and if um, I mean I will try to take some uh, questions because we have uh, we we have some we have about uh, thirty to forty questions that I just uh, received. The first one will be uh, just can can you put it clear on on the slow steaming parts? So today uh, I mean previous COVID uh, going from Shanghai to Asia to Europe it was twenty twenty five days. To date, what 40, 45, mm. 50 sometime? Yeah. Via the via the Suez Canal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now that we are going through uh, the south of Africa, I mean, can we imagine that slow steaming won't be uh, happening again or going back to normal steaming? Yeah. Ever? For the young supply chain managers who are with us, when I started my career a long time ago. The sharpest transit time between Singapore, not China, okay. between Singapore and Europe through the Suez Canal was 17 days. Okay. Can you believe it? 17 <laughs> days. That means speeds of 23, 24 knots. That was burning a lot of fuel. This was with some turbine vessels and with capacities of 2,000 TUs. Just close <laughs> the parenthesis. But yes, for the, the past year, uh, for a long time, for a long time, let's say, uh, past decades, 30, 35 days was, uh, 30 days was acceptable from China to Europe. And then, um, and then came first slow steaming, then came super slow steaming. Uh, slow steaming that was uh, between brackets uh, 14, 14 to 16 knots. Uh, slow steaming is around, uh, super slow steaming is around 10 knots and sometimes below 10 knots, between 8 and 10. Uh, and uh, so uh, some, some funny people sometimes said, well, uh, if we go to super, super, super slow steaming, next time the vessel will go reverse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's true that uh, we, we are in a scenario where um, also for environmental reason, but this is mostly communication because most of the machines doesn't like to to go uh, for a very, very long run mm -hmm. at very low RPMs. It doesn't uh, help the, the engine uh, and not even sometimes uh, the, the fuel consumption. So uh, on a technical point of view, but basically, yes, the idea was sold that um, slow speed uh, equal to uh, better uh, consumption and which is in a way true, and uh, also uh, less emissions, less emissions from the cargo side. And that's the reason why screwing through, because we could think that, okay, you are going through the, through the Cape and it was the first statement, no big deal will be one week more, six, seven days more. That was that was what we heard at the beginning. And uh, we, we now we understand that the truth is double than that and more than double than that. And why? It is because no one wants to take the opportunity to speed up the vessel. And uh, you can't uh, agree with your questions uh, in terms of fairness. This is something that we can discuss. 
uh, a shipper can uh, understand to pay more on exceptional basis if uh, the shipping line will uh, speed up the vessel in order to try to uh, minimize the impact on the cargo. And apparently, uh, it is not uh, the way the shipping line reacts so far. Maybe it will change under your pressure, under the pressure of the shippers, uh, under the pressure of the shippers and the forwarder. And maybe we will see some vessels spinning up. The issue, it is that we are not in, in a particular period with, uh, where the fuel is not expensive. Uh, and the very low sulfur oil is 700, 750, I didn't uh, see lately, uh, but but we are not at 300 uh, US dollar per ton. Huh? Uh, we are at uh, 400 US dollar per ton. We are at 7, 800, and even more uh, US dollar per ton. That means that uh, with this new route and this new distance, to speed up the vessel uh, will come at a huge cost. And it is not already, in terms of emission, very friendly to have a longer route. If, in addition to a longer yeah. route, you have more speed and more consumption, uh, it will not be very easy to, 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 to claim a, a benefit from this situation, uh, particularly from the environment side. Uh, I have uh, two, two new questions. Um... But uh, I will distribute the last question that we will uh, that we will handle. Uh, please, I see people raising their hand. Please just write on the chat for the question, please, so that we can uh, we can address it. Uh, the first one is regarding the equipment, regarding the the containers, the lack of equipment. Um, with uh, the routes that will take more and more time, with a uh, vessel being on the sea uh, longer time. Can we expect uh, forecast? Or can we see right now some uh, beginning of lack of uh, equipment in mm -hmm. Europe or uh, across the world? And the last question would be: uh, Can we see an impact on rates? We see the impact on rates between Asia to Europe, but do we see this impact on other routes, mm -hmm. transatlantic, for instance? Mm -hmm. And the last one is: How can I do my budget in this situation? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's begin with the lack of equipment, and then yeah. we'll talk about money. Well, uh, two things uh, related to what Thomas said. Uh, I heard also on the market, oh, there will be some lack of equipment. Oh, there will be some uh, congestion back in the port because this disruption will make all the vessel to come at the same place in the same time, blah, 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 blah. For time being, what we record, it is, the, it is slow. It, it is not really impacting. It may impact in the weeks to come, but for time being, there is no real impact of it. Uh, equipment situation, I don't understand, to be honest. In some places, in some cases, why not? But globally, I don't understand. We are talking about demand from China. To me, China is globally in an overstock situation. So what are we talking about? If it is not creating fears. <laughs> and uh, so I don't agree with this analysis of uh, saying there will be a huge uh, equipment crunch. It might be the case in some specific areas, so but it's not as a global threat. But why? Because the global trade is slow. The, there is no real growth in the global trade. Except in uh, intra Asia, in the, upper, in, in the Pacific, yes. But there is, there is not the, what we experience in the post-lockdown era. Port congestion is a more serious issue to me to, uh, to, uh, to foresee for the end of the month in Europe. Uh, and maybe also in Asia, but uh, but particularly in Europe. And we have an indicator in the US and the western uh, western ports of the US coast, uh, uh, US West Coast, showing that the average delays uh, for the vessels uh, in the San Pedro Bay are growing, are climbing a little bit. And uh, it is it has to be monitored close, closely because. Uh, Effectively, um, it is not because globally there is not a huge volumes to, to move. Uh, these volumes are still very significant, if not, if, even if they are not growing that much. 
they are still very significant and some disruptions um, uh, can uh, can affect the way the flow of cargo can uh, be handled through through the port mm -hmm. so yeah, uh, thank you. Second uh, question. Yeah, no, thank you, Jérôme. And, and we'll be the, the last one regarding really budget and globally speaking, uh, speaking about how can I do my budget today with this uncertainty, with this volatility? Of course, we don't have the, the right answer for sure. But because first one, can we see increase of prices in other places? Uh, yes, 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 yes. So, um, <clears throat> First question, yes, it's keep calm and carry on, uh, as said the, the, the famous motto. Uh, no one can handle this situation. Uh, I'm talking about the Houthis for very long. The Chinese can't do with it for a very long time. Maybe it will be an opportunity for them to enter the diplomacy game at a wider and broader scope uh, and not to let only always the uh, US. Uh, to be to be uh, to be the boss uh, for this kind of arbitrations, uh, it would be interesting also to see how India will uh, will will uh, will answer to uh, from the diplomatic side. But at the end of the way, this, it can't last, and uh, we already know that it will not last as long as the COVID, the pandemic, lasts. So uh, how I don't know, but for how long, I see an impact on the first quarter. Definitely, because if we are going back to normal through the canals, at least for the Suez Canal, um, time to reintroduce and to reschedule everything, uh, will uh, it will take one more month. So let's say that the, the first quarter, it, it's over. But we can see in terms of budget approach to consider that Q2, Q3, Q4 can be in the guidelines of what uh, you expected in October, back in October, but with a slight premium, with a slight premium on it. And uh, I'm with a slight premium going into the direction of uh, what I explained uh, before previously in terms of fair prices approach. And uh, that is to say, if you can wait, if you can as a shipper, not participate to uh, bringing uh, some fever to put the prices uh, above the roof. I think it will be ben it will be it will be nice for for everyone. Uh, for time being, the feedback I have from the shipping lines it is that there is not a huge panic uh, from the shipper side or a huge cargo surge. But of course, um, that means that uh, the B plans that have been activated um, in uh, resiliency of supply chains after post COVID, after the COVID, will be yes more activated more. Uh, I see uh, a lot of activity within the med. I see a lot of activity with the truck with the eastern countries. I see a lot of activity with the train. Uh, from China to Duisburg. I see a lot of activity with um, RNC solution via Dubai. Yes, all, all, all this does exist. And uh, the good guys uh, will be the guy who will get their seat in order to cope with the crisis we are experiencing now. But this crisis, will this crisis last for very long? I don't think so. Okay, so the, the let's say the answer for how can I manage my budget to come is first quest, quarter was not expected. It will it will be the case. I mean the increase is here. The increase will last certainly because the situation won't back won't go back to normal uh, in a fingertip in in some weeks. Mm. But for the rest of the year, uh, let's expect uh, back to normal with a certain premium because volatility might be there. Geo geopolitical risk might be there also. Mm. So it's better to take back into, into yeah. consideration. Talking about the big picture, and I will finish with that, and we wrote it already more than a month ago, definitely turner of budget 2024 will be more expensive to buy some sea freight than 2023. It is obvious. Now, what will be the proportion is another question. Mm. We will answer, of course, to all of your questions uh, offline. 
And uh, before to say goodbye to all of you, I would like to highly recommend uh, a very good uh, YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, hosted by uh, Sam Mercoglianos, what's going on with shipping. You can have a very good insight in addition to apply, of course, <laughs> about what's, uh, what's going on and what's happening in nearly real time. And it's a very good source to explain more in deep and with more time to your in-house customers and to your customers what's going on. Many thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. And to to to, to finish, to the, the, the things that Jerome was talking about, the link will be uh, in the description of this video that will be published also on YouTube. So this is recorded. You will have access to it on YouTube and every everyone will receive uh, that, is, that, that is registered to the, to the webinar will receive the slides that we just show uh, plus the link to the video. And in the description of the video, you will find uh, the materials that uh, Jerome was talking about, the YouTube channel uh, that he was recommending, and also all the links uh, of apply. Once again, thank you very much. We receive a lot of very good feedback. So thank you for that. We will we will think about the new one uh, and when we will do uh, this one. Please come and, have, uh, and come to see us. If you have any questions, you have our contacts over there. Please follow us on LinkedIn, send us some feedback if you have. I would be very happy to answer to all your, your requests and comments. Um, and see you, see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leo. Goodbye. Thank Bye. you, Thomas. Bye.